Elaine, yes? Okay. Anybody else? David? Amazing. Okay, cool. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this application is brand new this year, okay? They revamped it, okay? They call it the Better FAFSA, okay? They tried to cut down on a, like 138 questions down to like 65, 70 questions, okay? It should be more straightforward. However, we want to make sure that you guys pay attention to the verbiage, okay? There's different type of, of words that they're using in this application that could be confusing to anybody, okay? Including us counselors, teachers, doctors, professionals, everybody, okay? So we want to make sure we pay attention to the detail. There's no rush in getting through this application as long as we make sure everything is correct, okay? So, with that said, please also take out your cell phone, okay? I know you guys all have cell phones. So take out your cell phone now, please. And then let's all take a look up at the board, okay? I need everybody to take a picture of this slide, this flyer. Okay. Mr. Costa, come on, I'm running out of film on my phone. What's up? Yeah. Check it out. On this flyer, this is going to have the location, time, and dates of our financial aid workshops. Okay? You guys, you yeah. students need to take advantage yeah. of these workshop dates. You guys need to come in and see us to work on your financial aid application, okay? Because guess what? After today, when we get you guys launched, you guys are on your own. Okay? It's up to you to come see us on these dates. Okay? Guess what? It's hard for you guys to come into the office and come see us because we're always running around. We're busy. Okay? We each have about 310, 320 students on our caseload. We're, we're coming and going. So we might miss each other. However, that's why we set these sides, these, these dates aside for you guys specifically to come in and work on your applications, okay? Parents are invited as well, okay? Ms. Goodwin will be having food available for all of them. So please bring them and invite them. Look, Ms. Goodwin's bringing donuts. Is this you? Yeah, even the cream-filled ones. Okay, that's the email you So just make sure you let them know so they can come and get the assistance, okay? Especially the parent portion of this application, it tends to be or it's currently being, there's a lot of errors in the parent part, especially the login, okay? So we wanna make sure if parents are getting kicked out at home, come in, sit with us, and let's take care of business. Any questions regarding the workshops? Okay, everybody logged in? Give me a thumbs up, you logged in. Ladies, gentlemen, over there on the right, or on the, the north side? We're almost here. Almost? Okay. Create a new password for yourself. Okay, once you also want to create one with no capital. Thank you. Create your create a new password okay? and don't forget it. Okay. Anyone else needs to reset their password for the California Colleges edu? How's my boy Aiden back there, Mr. Millis? He's getting there. All right. Oh, my. 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 Oh, Okay. All right, Matthew, you okay? Yeah. All right, buddy. Here we go. Now that everybody or the majority of you have been logged in, let's get it rolling, okay? Top of your, your page, find financial aid. Mama, you're good. Find financial aid at the top. Go ahead and click on it. It's going to take you here. This is where you're going to determine if you're undocumented, we do the California Dream Act. If you have a social, you're going to click on FAFSA. Okay? Once you click on that, if you chose FAFSA, you're going to scroll down to the bottom of that page. And on the left-hand corner, 
you're going to find a blue little link under sources. Okay? Everybody see it? Give me a nod. Click on it. It's going to take you here. Andy, we good over there? Good one? Good one? Good? Okay, Bill, say good? Yeah. Really say good back there? Say good next. Can I ask my brother, because uh, he did it for me? Yes. You guys should already have a login for this. We created this a little while back. You guys need to make sure you save this stuff. After we're here, right, we're going to click on start new form. Please make sure it says 24, 25 class of form. Do not do 23, 24. 24, 25. No, just do yours for now. Okay. Once you click on 24, 25, it's going to take you to the FSA ID login. So go ahead and plug in your FSA ID login. You guys have your phones out because it might have you verify some information, your email, your phone. Have everything ready. So this entire bar needs to be free. If you work too slow, it's going to keep you up. So just go right there. Okay. That's good? Yeah, you can't go where you should already have your user and password. Matthew, you okay? I'm uh, not sure yet. Go ahead and verify. Keep going. Log in. Uh, I don't really remember the password. Okay, so go to forgot my password. And try to reset. It. Go, All right. in. Thank you, Miss Uyoa. Everybody, let Miss Uyoa have a nice day. Have a Happy nice Friday. day. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I see some of us forgot our passwords. You guys should have saved it in your phones. Once you guys get logged in successfully and you guys verify some information, you should be taken to here. Okay? Stop there. You guys good? Okay, stop there. Okay, <coughs> go ahead and stop. You can hear his voice? Okay, is good when we good? Yeah. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's look up at the front. Please. Okay? Once we get here, you guys are going to determine your role, right? You guys are the students, so check the student and then click continue. Okay, it should take you here. As you notice at the top, there's four different onboarding <coughs> steps, okay? It's going to give you a little rundown of what this new application is about, okay? If you click continue to go to the second one, it's going to tell you about the contributors and who is a contributor and what they need to contribute, okay? It might ask you for both parents. It might ask you only just for one, okay? Last period, all students that were in here were only asked for one parent. Okay, which is awesome because now we don't have to create two FSAIDs. Okay? 
what to expect. This application should take you about an hour. As long as you have all of the information that's needed, it should only take about an hour, then you're done. Last period, Mr. Milius. I'd say about 96% of our students were able to get to the parent part and they were done. We actually had four students submit their portion of their application last period. That's what I'm talking about. Okay? Last step. Once you submit your FAFSA form, your application, okay? First or second week of February is when you're gonna get your report back. And now the new name for the report is called the SAI, the Student Aid Index. Okay, it's no longer the SAR, the Student Aid Report. It's an index now determining how much aid you're gonna need, okay? Remember, this is based off of what you
decided to stay single, so if you're single, you can live by yourself, you can live with roommates, things like that. Um, you know, and then there's people that kind of go in between all of them. So you can be married, cohabitated, you can go back to being single again, um, you can be divorced, there's all kinds of different situations. So as far as this goes, just know what each one of those means. Um, the difference between marriage and just living together as marriage provides that kind of that, that legal um, that legal contract really um, and responsibilities that entails that entails uh, protection, financial protection, um, legal protection, and uh, things like that. Uh, in the past, it used to be you had to be married to get things like insurance. You don't really have to be born to go out and date for a period of time. But uh, there are certain things that come along with it as well. Okay? So the stats on this were done a few years ago. Um, you see men and women, as far as being married, um, they're about the same. Men and, uh, women 51, women 54. So a little over half of men and women at any time are married. So you know, that could be first time marriages, that could be people that have been married before. So that ties in with divorced people as well. About 20% of women and about 35% of men have never been married. So either they're single or they may have cohabited with somebody, but they've never been married for whatever reason they choose not to. Um, about 11% of women and about 9% of men have been divorced, uh, meaning that they have been married and then they separated, they broke apart, and they're officially divorced. So they're either living divorced uh, remember, some of those divorced people do remarry, so they're back in the married category, so that would be part of that. Um, and then, of course, uh, there's a category called widow. Widow just means that you were married and the person, your spouse, passed away. Um, typically, you'll see that with older couples. And you'll see that the females are higher, women are higher than men, um, and widows. 8% women, 2% men. And the reason is because women typically outlive men, they live longer. So when you see couples, you'll see more older women. And the males will typically not live as long, they'll die before the females. That's why you see the disparity. Um, it's, it's just that genetic thing. Um, males typically don't live as long. So, that's why it's um, so those, are the, uh, those are the stats as far as uh, relationships. So what I want you to know for this section is just uh, the different forms of relationships. And then the advantages versus disadvantages. Once again, the main one being that if you are married, you report some kind of legal financial protection under that, your license, um, and so the state backs it, so there are some things tied to that as well. So some people choose to do that, maybe have families or not, maybe be married, not a kid if you want. Some people choose to just live together and not be married. So it's a personal decision, it's up to you if you want to do that. All right, so we have relationships. So what happens when they go bad? So once again, things like what happens when they end, um, how do you deal with a breakup? How do you deal with a bad relationship? That kind of thing. So we talk about unhealthy versus healthy relationships. And you know, they can be a complicated thing. Like people go through uh, one or several in their lifetime. And you know, each time they're different. And there's different things to learn about them. So, uh, but first off, uh, we have to recognize that certain relationships can be abusive. And when they are, usually that's terms for you know, getting out of a relationship. For instance, if somebody just has a lot of anger or swearing at you, so they're yelling at you, they're putting you down, it's like verbal abuse. They're um, hurting you, making fun of you, putting you down. They're controlling you, they're telling you basically who you can see and hang out with, what you can do. Um, so they don't really give you personal freedom, they want to control you. Um, so once again, that's uh, a, a reason. Um, they're excessively jealous, maybe uh, that's part of their control, or they want to taps on you, or they want to follow you, or they want to track you. Um, remember, you know, even if you're in a relationship, you are certainly entitled to a certain amount of privacy in your own life and have your own life aside from that. Um, you know, when you get married, you certainly couple up with somebody or you can live with them. But at the same time, you know, you still have some of your own life to deal with. So that's part of it. Shutting people out you don't want to see, so they don't want to see your family, your friends. Um, that, that could be a part of the control issue, right? They're controlling. That's a problem. You're not really um, both part of the relationship making the decisions. The other person just tries to tell you uh, what to do all the time and controls you. Uh, continued negativity, unwanted sex or intimacy, um, makes threats to you. So they're threatening you with, could be physically, could be mentally, could be financially. There's all kinds of threats that you to make sure, right? Uh, maybe in trouble, fighting, maybe they get in trouble with the law. Um, not, not listed on here, but it's a big reason. Uh, people might be addicted, right? They might be alcoholics or drug addicts. Um, another thing on there that's not on there is lying and cheating, right? They could be lying to you, they could be hiding what they're doing, they could be out um, um, 
messing around on the side of a relationship when they're supposedly committed to you or married, that's um, you have that you know that idea in your head that that's not what they're supposed to be doing. So look, there's plenty of reasons why people uh, in relationships will break up. Um, certainly, the ones that are abusive are certainly valid ones. There's a lot of reasons why people break up in relationships, not for that, but simply because they have issues in the relationship, or they maybe they grew apart, or maybe they're fighting about something. These things kind of continue to dwell and keep. So a lot of people in relationships, uh, you know, this could be for non-abusive reasons, like being too critical, um, being defensiveness and not taking responsibility. So part of communication, you're gonna deal with your issues in your relationship. Um, if you're not willing to step up and make amends and apologize for things that you did, then that's a problem. Like you're always right, right, and the person's wrong. Uh, that's a problem. This one's pretty common, stonewalling, motion withdrawing. What that means is the people um, some people, especially the people that are more quiet, tend to shut down and they don't want to interact. They just go quiet and don't interact and talk to people. Um, that's a problem because you're ignoring the problem and you're thinking it's going to go away or you're not doing anything. So people that do that are probably as bad as people that um, make excessive drama and yelling and screaming. Like that. So stonewalling just means you're shutting down, you're not talking, you're ignoring the other person. Um, that's, that's not part of it, right? Front your issues. I mean, sometimes you're gonna have arguments, sometimes you're gonna have disagreements, that's part of being in a relationship. So it's important that you work together with the other person on, on getting along. That's not uh, uh, part of it. So some people you know have issues and some people end up either dealing with it or maybe going to therapy or something, or they decide that they're gonna have rules for the relationship or boundaries that they're gonna deal with. Intent talking or putting out to the person, certainly the person doesn't like you, they're not nice to you, they're putting you down. Uh, shaming, guilty, you, things like that. Those are certainly valid reasons. So what happens is these things happen in a relationship after a period of time. Look at the beginning. Usually everybody's pretty happy. The relationship's great. And then um, issues start to pop up. Right? And then all of a sudden you start to see problems with it. And then these things kind of just um, kind of spin out of control. And if they're not dealt with or coped with, then the person, usually one of the other uh, people, end up having this as an issue that ends the relationship. So this can be problems that you know. And you need to kind of handle them as they come up. If you just let them push them aside, they're going to continue to cause problems. So my, my point is, if you're in a relationship, you're better off dealing with the issues with the other person and talking about them than just pushing them aside. Because you're going to just end up getting content. You're going to be upset and frustrated. It's a problem. So my, my, my thing is, uh, you need to talk to the person about your issues. You need to communicate. Don't shut down. That's not good. So how do people deal with uh, when relationships end? So let's say you tried, right, didn't work out, you had a breakup. You know, people go through this, you go through multiple or one or whatever. Uh, it's very rare that people will date somebody in high school uh, and then you marry them. This does happen, you know, people do marry and they stay together. But some people will go through a few relationships, right? And they, once again, uh, sometimes they break down. They break down for various reasons. But if you have a breakup, uh, how do you deal with it? So there's a few things here. Um, you know, realize that it's difficult for a while. Um, look, you're grieving uh, the loss of uh, the emotional connection you have with somebody you love. So um, just acknowledge that. Give yourself time to recover. Let go of thoughts, feelings, and habits, okay? Um, it's up to you whether or not you want to communicate with them. I personally think that uh, not is probably an easy way to recover, but um, some people just like cut it off and get, get off social media and everything else. But sometimes it's hard because you see that person. Well, let's say you're in school and you see them every day or you have the same group of friends or whatever. Um, let's say you get divorced and you had kids with the person. Um, you have to deal with them as well. So you have to be able to deal with that as a, a relationship. So um, a good idea is to hang out with your friends, to reconnect, to go out and do fun things. Um, I'm recommending it some people like to excessively party or drink or do things like that, um, or go and sleep around with other people and things like that. That's not really a good way to deal with things because they, uh, it ends up just putting a bandaid over the wound. It's not really solving your issues. So try to think about what went wrong in the relationship. Spend time to deal and cope with it. And also, uh, just spend time to recover. And one thing you, you don't want to do is just jump to another person, right? So some people, what they do is they'll break up and then they're dating somebody else in a week. Uh, that's that's kind of soon especially if you've been with them for a long time. 
And so they'll bounce from person to person because they don't want to deal with the issues that came up. They'd rather just have another person lined up. So um, give yourself some time to recover, think about it. And remember, um, it's not always somebody else. I mean, like, people like to blame the other person 100%. But there's two people involved in a relationship, and you know you think about what, how you contributed or didn't contribute. What are some things you can work on? How can you improve yourself, right? Go to the gym, improve yourself, get in better shape, hang out with your friends, think about ways you can improve your, your relationship status, right? Think, think about ways you can improve yourself. What what more issues in the relationship? So what one does is it forces you to think about what you want and don't want. And then later on you can find something you really want to have You know, because sometimes it's never going to be out of the center of something you can think about, okay? All right, so just to open it up here, what are some of the reasons why people um, in relationships, what are some of the reasons why? What are some of the issues? Anybody want to chime in? Yeah. Uh, sure. And the issues can come up, personal problems, personal issues. So it's not necessarily always about just that other person, but uh, you have issues with family, things like that kind of thing. Uh, being too controlling. Too controlling? Sure. Yeah. Somebody's trying to control you and tell you what to do and what you see. Yeah, any, any others? Uh, so you're not talking about things, right? So instead of like, if the issues come up, you need to discuss with the other person, but you don't want to shut down and just be quiet. If you're quiet and you don't talk to the other person, it's called stonewalling, that's not good. Because that's, that's shutting down and you talk about your issues. So yes. Communication means you're gonna, you know, if something comes up, you're gonna bring that up in your partner, and, and there's a there's a good way to do that. Uh, it's a skill actually. You don't want to blame the other person. You just want to talk about how something they feel and talk about, it, right? And you don't want to like point fingers at that person. You just want to um, say, look, this happened. I was upset. You know, I'm gonna let you know, and then maybe the person doesn't realize it. Don't. And then be willing to apologize sometimes too. That's important. So sometimes you want to make up. You have to be willing to say, oh, I'm sorry, it's something that upset you. Any others? Lying, cheating, drug addiction, abuse, you guys have mentioned that, right? So they could be uh, addicted, they could be abusive, right? They could be uh, lying and cheating. There's a lot of issues with, that people have when they break up with people. Um, but that's not all of them. They just break up because they grow apart and they, they don't, for some reason, whatever reason, there's issues in the relationship. So how do we deal with it? Well, what's a good way to deal with a breakup? Anybody? What do you, what's a good idea? Yeah. Spend time with friends. Hang out with your friends. Get back together with your friends. Hopefully, you you uh, hopefully you, you hung out with your friends when you're in a relationship. Because what some people do is they'll get in a relationship, they'll just um, hang out with the other person the whole time, and they'll just kind of ignore their friends, and then they break up, and they're like, oh, hang out with your friends again. But you know, your friends would probably be upset, like, oh, you didn't hang out with us, and you were with them. But try to spend time with your friends, um, and then if you, know, you break up, you still have your friends, right? So you hang out with your friends. Go do fun things and then what else? How can you improve yourself? What can you do to improve yourself when you have a breakup? Uh, let go of negative thoughts, patterns, and habits. Okay, yeah, so try to not be negative, right? Try to be spend it towards the positive. It's hard because you're you're gonna feel bad. You're gonna you're gonna feel negative about it, but you could always try to think, well, what can I learn from this? Uh, what about you know going to the gym? What about working on yourself? What about improving yourself? Right? Nothing can go wrong when you improve yourself. So the, the turn on social media is leveled up because for that, right? You go to the gym, you work out, you get in better shape, you work on your appearance, you work on your communication skills, you work on your um, you know just just going out and socializing, work on yourself, right? You improve yourself. Nothing can go wrong when you improve yourself. You improve yourself. You'll be a you'll be a better person out there in the dating world. So once again, what can you do to improve yourself, to, to make yourself a better partner in a relationship, right? Those are things to think about. So um, yeah, those are definitely ways to cope. And another thing you mentioned is don't uh, try not to jump right into another relationship. Try to give yourself time to recover because you need to learn some things in that time, right? So that's a good time to. All right, the next sections are uh, sexual identity and um, things like that.
Yeah. Yeah. Some people will be saying like by that, but like they're screaming at the whack. Like they're looking so pretty. Like remember like they were like a computer from 2003. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
question? Okay, so let's go ahead. Uh, I do want to try to get through this quickly. Yes, Roger. Well, the power two stays strong. Huh? The power two stays strong. Power two stays strong. I saw your email too. What is the new one? I could ask, where, should, where do I find your uh, screen saver thing? What, what was your new picture you know, Matthew? Uh, my new profile picture oh, for oh. my account. Is the power two? Yeah, but it's a GIF. It's a GIF? Yeah. That's how you say GIF. I always say GIF. All right, guys, so phase 252, power of two, we're going to read.
Antonio's fans. Had unbridled faith in his boxing skills. On the other side, Felix's admirers trusted in his dynamite-packed fists. Felix had returned to his apartment early in the morning of August 7th and stayed there, hoping to avoid seeing Antonio. He turned the radio on to salsa music sounds and then tried to read the waiting for word from his manager. Yeah, I'm So, will the boys become enemies or remain loyal friends? What do you guys think? Soccer? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, the other guy's all more enemies? Yeah, I'm going to see him. You want me to go watch? You want me to go watch something? <laughs> The final schedule will take place in Tompkins Square Park. It has been decided that the gymnasium of the Boys and Girls Boys Club was not large enough to hold all the people who were sure to attend. In Tompkins Square Park, everyone who wanted could view the fight, whether from ringside or window, fire escapes, or tenement rooftops. The morning of the fight, Tompkins Square was a beehive of activity with numerous workers setting up the ring, the seats, and the guest speaker stand. The scheduled bout began shortly after noon and the park had begun filling up even earlier. The local junior high school across from Tompkins Square Park served as the dressing room for all the fighters. Each was given a separate classroom with desktops covered with mats serving as resting tables. Antonio thought he caught a glimpse of Felix waving them from a room at the far end of the corridor. He waved back just in case it hadn't been him. The fighters changed from Fighters changed from street clothes into fighting gear. Antonio wore white trunks, black socks, and black shoes. Felix wore sky blue trunks, red socks, and white boxing shoes. Each had dressing gowns to match their fighting trunks with their names neatly stitched on the back. Mm -hmm. The loudspeakers blared into the open windows of the school. There were speeches by dignitaries, community leaders, and great boxer, boxers of yesteryear. Some were well prepared, some improvised on the spot. They all carried the same message of great pleasure and honor at, the, at being part of such a historic event. This great day was in, tra in the tradition of champions emerging from the streets of the Lower East Side. Interwoven with the speeches were the sounds of the other boxing event. After the sixth bout, Felix was much relieved when his trainer Charlie said, time to change, quick knockout. This is it. We're on. The anticipation is building on this boy, right? And getting ready for the big event they trained so hard for. Let's see what happens. <coughs> Waiting time was over. Felix was escorted by, from the classroom by a dozen fans in white t shirts with the word Felix across their front. Antonio was escorted down different stairwells and guided through a roped off path. As the two climbed into the ring, the crowd exploded, exploded with a roar. Antonio and Felix both bowed gracefully and then raised their arms in acknowledgement. Antonio tried to be cool, but even as the roar was in its first burst, he turned slowly to meet Felix's eyes looking directly into his. Felix nodded his head and Antonio responded. 
and both as one just as quickly turned away to face his own corner. Bong, 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 the roar turned into stillness. Ladies and gentlemen, seniors and seniors, the announcer spoke slowly, pleased that is, by bilingual effort. Now the moment we have all been waiting for. The main event between two fine Puerto, Puerto Rican fighters, products of the, our Lower East Side. In this corner, weighing 134 pounds, Felix Vargas. And in this corner, weighing 133 pounds, Antonio Cruz. The winner will represent the boys club in the tournament of champions, the gold glove. There will be no draw, may the best man win. The cheering of the crowd shook the window panes of the whole building surrounding Tompkins Square Park. At the center of the ring, the referee was giving instructions to the youngsters. Keep your punches up, no low blows. No punching on the back of the head. Keep your heads up, understand? Let's have a clean fight. Now shake hands and come out fighting. Both the youngsters touched gloves and nodded. They turned and danced quickly to their corner. Does anybody want to read or you guys give it to me reading? You can read. Nobody? Okay. Is that yes you want to read? No. Okay. Can. Their head towels and dressing gowns were lifted neatly from their shoulders by their trainer's nimble fingers. Antonio crossed himself. Felix did the same. Bong, 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 round one. Felix and Antonio turned and faced each other squarely in a fighting pose. Felix wasted no time. He came in fast, head low, half punched towards his right shoulder, and lashed out with a straight left. He missed a right cross as Antonio slipped the punch and countered with one, two, three lefts that snapped Felix's head back, sending a mild shot coursing through him. If Felix had any small doubt about their friendship affecting the fight, it was being neatly dispelled. Antonio danced, a joy to behold. His left hand was like a piston pumping jab one right after another with seeming ease. Felix bobbed and weaved and never stopped boring in. He knew that at long range, he knew that at long range he, he was at a disadvantage. Antonio too had too much reach on him. Only by coming in close could Felix hope to achieve the dreams of, of knockout. Antonio knew the dynamite that was stored in his amigo brother's fist. He ducked a short right and missed the left hook. Felix trapped him against the rope, just long enough to pour some punishing rights and left to Antonio's hard midsection. Antonio slipped away from Felix, crashing two lefts to his head, which set Felix, Felix's right ear to ring. Bomb, both of me. Felix walked briskly back to his corner. His right ear had not stopped ringing. Antonio gracefully dashed his leg towards his stool. Sorry. None the worse, except for the glowing glove burn, showing angry red against the whiteness of his midriff. Watch that right, Tony, his trainer talked into his ear. Remember, Felix, always goes to the body. He'll want you to drop your hand for his overhead left or right. Got it? Antonio nodded, spraying water out between his teeth. He felt better 
as the sore midsection was being firmly rubbed. Felix's corner was also busy. You gotta get in there, fella. Felix's is trying to pour water over his curly afro lock. Get in there or he's gonna chop you up from way back. Bon bon, round two. Felix was off the stool and rushed Antonio like a bull, sending a hard right to his head. Beads of water exploded from Antonio's long hair. Antonio heard. Sent back a blurred barrage of right, lefts, and rights that only meant pain to Felix, who returned with a short left to the head followed by a looping right to the body. Antonio countered with his own flurry, forcing Felix to give ground, but not for long. Felix bobbed and weaved, bobbed and weaved, occasionally punching his gloves together. Yeah. Thank you so much, Miss Patty. How's your day going? Good? That was good. Occasionally punching his two gloves together. Antonio waited for the rush that was sure to come. Felix closed in, fainted with his left shoulder, and threw his right instead. Light suddenly exploded inside Felix's head as Antonio took the blow and hit him with a piston like left catching him flush on the point of his chin. Bedlam broke loose as Felix's legs momentarily buckled. He fought off a series of rights and lefts and came back with a strong right that topped Antonio's respect. Antonio danced in carefully. He knew Felix had the habit of playing possum when hurt, the sucker an opponent within reach of a powerful bomb to carry his deep fist. Yeah, I know what playing possum is. Playing dead, like possum can play dead, right? To avoid attacks or whatever. Yeah. That's playing possum, you can pretend. Uh, a right to the head showed, slowed Antonio's pretty dancing. He answered with his own left at Felix's right eye that began puffing up in three seconds. Antonio, a bit too eager, moved in too close, and Felix had him entangled into a rip roaring, punching toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe slug that brought the whole Tompkins Square Park screaming to its feet. Oh, so exciting. Look at all the fighting right there. So, who's going to win? Rights to the body, lefts to the head. Neither fighter was given an inch. Suddenly, a short right caught Antonio squarely on the chin. His long legs turned to jelly and his arms flailed out desperately. Felix, running like a bull, threw wild punches from every direction. Antonio, froggy, bobbed and weaved, fading most of the blows. Suddenly, his head cleared. His left, his left flashed out hard and straight, hitting Felix on the bridge of his nose. Oh, excitement. You sure nobody wants to read? I feel like I'm taking all your guys' fun. You want to read? Felix laughed back with a haymaker right off the ghetto street. At the same instant, his eye caught another left hook from Antonio. Felix swung out trying to clear the pain. Only the frenzied screaming of those along ringside let him know that he had dropped Antonio. Lord. Fighting off the growing haze, Antonio struggled to his feet, got up, ducked and threw a smashing right that dropped Felix flat on his back. Felix got up as fast as he could in his own corner, groggy but still game. He didn't even hear the count. In the fog, he heard the roaring of the crowd, who seemed to have gone insane. His head cleared to hear the bell sound at the end of the round. He was damn glad. His trainer sat him down on the stool. In this corner, I mean, in his corner, Antonio was doing all, what all fighters do when they are hurt. They sit and smile at everyone. The referee signaled the ring doctor to check the fighters out. He did so and then gave his, gave his okay. The cold water sponges brought clarity to both Amigo brothers. They were rubbed into the circula their circulation round three. Wow, round three, the final round. Up to now, it had been tic-tac-toe pretty much even. But everyone knew there could be no draw and that this round would decide the winner. This, this time, to Felix's surprise, it was Antonio who came out fast, charged him across the ring. Felix braced himself, but couldn't ward off the barrage of punches. Antonio drove Felix hard against the ropes. The crowd ate it up. Thus far, the two had fought with mucho corazón. 
Felix tapped his glove and commenced his attack anew. Antonio, throwing boxers, caution to the wind, dumped in to meet us. Both pounded away. Neither gave an inch, and neither fell to the counter. Felix's left thigh was tightly closed. Clear red, red, red blood poured from Antonio's nose. They fought toe to toe. The sounds of the blows were loud in contrast to the silence of the crowd gone completely mute. Bong, bong, bong. The bell sounded over and over again. Felix and Antonio were past here. The blows continued to pound on each other like hailstones. Finally, the referee. <sighs> the referee and the two trainers pried Felix and Antonio apart. Cold water was poured over them to bring them back to their senses. They looked around, then rushed towards each other. A cry of alarm surged through Tompkins Square Park. Was this a fight to the death instead of a boxing match? The fear soon gave way to wave upon wave of cheering as the two amigos embraced. No matter what the decision, they knew they would always be champions for each other. Who went? Let's see. Who? Oh. Bong, bong, bong. Ladies and gentlemen, senors and senores, the winner and representative to the Golden Glove Tournament of Champions is. Now, announce her turn to point to the winner and found himself alone. Arm in arm, the champion had already left the ring. They were both winners. No. See, I told you they're both they alone. Left. No. They left. They left, they left the as winners. winners. They, they left, left as champions. No. Yes. No. Right? I'm Oh my God, Evelyn, Daphne, you guys wake up. I just, sat here, I just sat here and did all the work for you guys. I ran and you guys weren't supposed to take a nap and you guys were taking a nap. It's like, oh my gosh. Who do you think really won? Me. Antonio or Felix? Neither. Both losers. Both losers, okay. All right, guys, we did this up, so we did, um, we got our first four. You guys can continue on working on finishing up your reference, uh, your inferences, please.
day school. I mean, to the company came to school, they were left.
sitting on my desk. Who? I think thank who who did? and more support by changing your seat to a better area where you can eliminate those distractions. Start way up. Is that better? Yeah. I did not say threat. No. Support, eliminate distractions. Got it. <laughs> there we go.
Could just use the time to get it all done and then you don't have to do it later. I'll give it a one.
guys, I'm, I'm really over phones. I don't want to see them, man. That student's really taking pictures in class. I don't want to see phones. Yeah. So put them away. I don't want to see them. Y'all need to watch a movie while you work. Y'all need to do any of that. Phones away. whether or not to get it, and Antonio Beach wants to win. So do you find the textual evidence? says whether they want to win. What? Like pretty much any one of those things show they want to win, right? Mm -hmm. so you just pick which one you want to do. We talked about this yesterday. There's lots of textual evidence, right? That will answer, that will answer your question. The inference is how, is how you so find your textual evidence that you want to use. So what one would you say? Finish the question, you're on, and then start cleaning up. You have like 10 minutes left. 